All right, I'm seeing here, this doesn't look right at all, Jacob. Yeah. What's wrong with this thing? Uh, this happened to get knocked out of the threader in a manufacturing process. Oh, I see that. There's like literally no threading in that. Yes. Okay, well, how would that happen? This is kind of a one-off failure. This is not something that happens that often. Okay. It just got bumped out and ended up in the finished rolled parts already. With and without necessary the threads. threads. All right, what else can happen? Uh, it could be something like a plating issue where the plating is applied unevenly. Okay, I see that on this. I see that it's different. How would something like that happen? Uh, this is a very extreme case. A lot of times parts are electroplated. They're put in barrels and it's basically tumbled. Well, this one got caught outside of being fully submerged, so okay. I think it evenly coated. Okay, so that was like in the machinery. Yeah. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, if we come over here, this is a part that was over tightened down. That can happen in a couple different ways. Whether too much torque was applied while it was being assembled, the coefficient of friction being wrong, somebody had some oil on their hands when they assembled it, and that messed with how much clamp load was created and the part went from elastic deformation to plastic deformation and started to cause the fastener to neck down. Whoa! Oh, so it's not supposed to be like that. Holy smoke. Yeah, that, that looks like a fastener failure. Yes. <laughs> and another thing here is, this is an application issue. Basically, the part was put on, and over time it got loose, and that ended up causing the part to slowly bend oh. and then lead to a ductile failure in the fastener. Whoa, so this came loose and nobody noticed and, and it didn't get tightened. And so then it actually completely fractured. Yes. 